Testing, testing. Great, we are now live. And let's see here. on just a moment all right everything is functioning so this is Jeremy Bailey from the environment guide.com and today we're going to start the first live stream of an art test I'm doing so I've applied to work at a local game studio and this game studio gives you a two week test to do uh, like they want you to design an environment there's no texturing involved but just the modeling and I'm going to be putting all the assets into the Unreal Engine 4 so to start off I'm going to look at the text that they sent me I have removed some some elements from this from this page just to now I'm, I'm not going to reveal what uh, what studio this is so so basically here is the requirements you must use either Unreal Engine 4 or UDK I've chosen Unreal Engine 4 in this case Unreal Engine 4.6 so the task Using the reference below, which I'll show in a moment, build a proxy modular static mesh kit and construct a city slash street slash street corner in Unreal. The buildings cannot all be the same height or width, so in other words, variance. You need to model these proxy assets, but all meshes should be colored gray. You should not spend time texturing. So I won't be doing the unwrapping for UVs. I I don't think I'm going to bother with light maps simply because it is a li limited time it's not uh, the focus of this project and obviously no textures so number two you must be able to piece together at least three different silhouette building shapes with your kit so in other words they can't all be just a rectangle or a square what well, see those are the same thing but you get the idea the outside shape must be unique and identifiable to the players. You must have at least one interior space. This can be anything from a local smoke shop, corner store, barber shop, etc. Keep it small but make it a believable space. You can, e you can use any prop or mesh you find in UDK or Unreal to help you populate this interior if you wish, but it must be colored gray. So what this tells me is I'm, I'm going to primarily be doing an exterior space because it says at least one interior space and it says keep it small right there so our set primarily going to be exterior secondary element interior and so those will be our modular pieces and there will probably be a small handful of one off items but we, we shall see when we get there the the one the the one off items aren't our top priority. We need to get the modular kit built first because that's going to have the largest impact for creating the a full scene. Next, it says you should package up your level and meshes and include it with the submission of the screenshots requested below. Note: We will load and run your level in the editor. So, in other words. I'm going to package up all the files once this is done in the Unreal Engine and I'm going to email it or no, get, get it to the studio somehow and they are going to look through it themselves. In other words, you can't be hiding any things in source code <laughs> or anything like that. You're, you're going to see the, the raw meshes. So, comp composition screenshots one take one well composed shot of your street slash street corner so just a picture take a well composed shot of your interior space so 
we need two pictures at least and line up your meshes and take a shot of them as we would like to see your buildings blocks that were used to make the set. In other words, all the pieces that I use creating the environment, we're just going to put them all beside each other and take pictures. Quite straightforward. Reference material. Panoramic image of an Italian street. And I, I may not pronounce this right, but I think it's Bizzano del Grappa. I don't know. I, I probably said that completely wrong, but that's our reference and they also give you a Wikipedia link which suggests to me that we should probably read it since they're giving us that information and then finally at the end it says this test will take two weeks long you may submit early if you are able but you must submit your test by the deadline that was emailed to you along with this test so for your information the deadline for me is August 10th I'm just starting it and right now it is July 29th, 2015. Of course, you should know that, but I'm recording this, so just so we have that in mind. So next thing I'm going to do, now that I've read through it, I'm going to make a few quick notes of how this is going to work. So I'm using UE4, so that's, that stands for Unreal Engine. The task is a modular static proxy mesh kit okay we are making modular static proxy mesh kit and it is obviously taking place somewhere in Italy we are just copy and paste that that's our location we are making the located in sorry I I uh, like like to use uh, Python once in a while it's a scripting language so I often write all my notes in the Python syntax or at least something that's uh, similar to that we are making make that type modular static proxy located in Zano del Grappa and we need screenshots there will be one one is going to be our street corner or block it doesn't say it has to be a street corner but it's obviously it's going to be in a city or a town at least and we also need a picture of our interior space. Now in here it specifically says composition but I mean I'm an artist obviously anyone else who's going to be working on games is also an artist so it's just a given composition I'm not going to bother putting it in, in the notes. And so type located screenshots so next thing I want to do that's, that's good enough for now. I'm going to close that I'm not going to save it didn't make any changes. The next thing I'm going to look at the reference material. Now I've already downloaded the picture that they supplied. And here it is. They gave me, I don't know, some kind of, I, it almost looks like, actually I think it's an apartment building. And then on the bottom you can see they have a little shop. So they said they wanted shops. So there you go, actually, I'm going to include that in here. Type module static here. Must include a shop of some sort, as well as ex exterior street slash block. Okay. That's what it must include. Maybe I'll space this out just to make it a little easier to read. There we go. So um, this is the only photo for reference they provide, which looking at this, I have to consider it, it nowhere in there does it say I can't go get more reference. So I, I don't feel as though, well, this is like 
Okay, never mind. I don't feel as though I'm not allowed to find additional reference. It doesn't say that anywhere in the project description. So I'm going to look for some more stuff. But obviously this is something close to what they're looking for. So it, it's going to stay within the same style. Nope, this is the style I'm going to be making. It needs to be similar and relatable. But nowhere did it say it has to be that exactly. So a few things I'm noticing besides the fact it's in Italy. Um, I see a really nice light post here. Very uh, appears to be quite intricate in detail. It's ac actually stuff like that's pretty easy to make if you notice. It's just uh, one small detail that's been duplicated around a cylinder. But uh, definitely that's something that I should consider putting in. Uh, some elements that I see quite a lot of the arches. I see a lot of arches, so that would be an excellent thing to use in our mesh kit that we're going to be building. Because you see that arch, like we could model that arch. That arch could be scaled in our game engine, and we could use that arch to create those some of these windows openings. Like on this building, we see a whole bunch of arches. Uh, arches there, you know, more another row of windows arches. This building has arched windows. Um, this has some opening with the arches. You see arches all up here. So I don't see any particular reason why I couldn't just make you know, one or two arches and then keep duplicating these around for all these other elements. Because right, this arch here, if we make that, just scale it and it becomes an arch there. So that's a definite mm, element that I want to consider in the design of this environment. Uh, once again, we see more arches up there, a little bit different. These arches have a point on the top, but just another variance of the art or arch. Um, the top of this building, it looks like if I can't see anything behind this little roof section, so I think it's ornamental. And if we look down here, these windows have that same uh, ornamental piece. So I'm thinking if I model a piece like that, I can also use it as decoration on the faces of the buildings doesn't just have to be the roof. Um, some another thing I see on all these buildings is that they all have this um, like ceramic tile kind of thing going on. I'm not sure what you call that, but the, those ceramic uh, roof tiles are definitely something I want to consider creating because it seems quite common in this area of the world. I mean, it's not like I've never seen Italy before. I'm just showing this picture. But yeah, all the all these buildings on the left hand side have that same kind of detail. Uh, other things that could be here, mm -hmm. sculptures. Um, they have some sculptures of people. I have noticed that's like a cultural thing you see a lot of. I don't think I'll be doing any sculptures. When I was on the phone with the studio, they specifically said that they would be more simple, blocky kind of models that I'd be making and to keep them all gray so and also because of time limits I don't think I have the time to be creating a uh, human human anatomy from scratch like an entire body like this I mean and that guy also has drapery so I would need to make a few drapery brushes and whatnot to sculpt which I don't really want to do excuse me I'm gonna have a drink okay but um, I'm noticing this pillar that he's that he's on top of. Um, that pillar, it kind of looks like that chimney, doesn't it? You know, it's the same shape, it's the same size approximately. So I'm thinking if I make this pillar, I could probably use an asset like that for multiple things. Like I could use it as a chimney. I could simply, like that top of that chimney there where the smoke is supposed to come out, at least that, that's why I believe that part is. I could simply make a little a little smoke outlet like that and stick it on top of this column and there you go you have a chimney you have a column you know it's like a decorative piece here uh, notice also on the bottom of these buildings they ha also have a similar column design going on so once again I could duplicate that piece and it becomes three things it becomes part of my building part of the aesthetics of of the scene and part of say you know the chimneys so that's a possible thing I'm going to 
create a note to that. Things to make, and we'll call that, we're going to put arch because that's a common piece. Uh, the triangular roof decor. So that's what I was talking about earlier with um, that piece right there. As I said, it's above those windows. Uh, the other thing, yes, column. So there, I see square column and I also see round ones here. Kind of uh, decorative stuff. So I'm going to put, I'm going to make two. I'm going to make uh, columns, square, and circular. Uh, other thing to make. Uh, I see these are all wooden boards that are like covering the windows. I think that's, and I, I think those green ones are also wooden boards. They're just painted another color. So they, I don't, I guess they're like blinds almost. I don't know if you, I don't think they call them blinds, but that's the general effect of what they are. See wood all along this building, it's all wood. Even the doors are made of wood. Uh, let's check out another building. See, I, th I, I can see that this building has some, some kind of uh, flap going over the outside of the window here as well. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking those wooden boards would be another good asset to create to cover the windows. So I'll call those window, uh, I'll just call it window covers. And it needs to be made of wood. Actually, while I'm at it, what's, uh, what material would that, these columns be? Would they be stone? It may be plaster. Well, you know what, it, the, the material doesn't really matter. A whole lot uh, with wood I can model even at, at low poly level I can model in like splits and cracks and you know things things that make it interesting but for most other materials without the texture it, it doesn't really matter so it's not a big deal so what else do I see uh, floor so this whole ground actually this ground area is interesting it must be this must have just rained here or something because it's so shiny but I think there's cobblestone and tile. Yeah, I can see the grout lines going around here. Like I see straight lines for grout on this tile, but I don't see any straight lines of this uh, speckled stuff for the road. So I, I expect that's cobble. So going back to my notes, I should also make flooring. And the flooring will include tile, cobble and I'll need something for the interior as well. I yeah, I don't have any reference for the inside here, but I can do a image search. Let's see. Here we are. This is a Wikipedia page. I'm I'm not going to read it right this moment, but I I am going to come back to this. Hmm. Web search. See if I just add floor into that. So I see a lot of wood. Lots of wood. What's that? Is that? I think that's polished stone. There's a corridor. It's all stone. Tile. Say that's the same stuff again. Show me some more. Well, I, I think I have a pretty good idea. Like all the all the images I'm seeing here, it's all like stone and tile kind of stuff. So for the flooring. Yeah, a tile and cobble. Maybe, maybe what I'll do is I'll make two. Make a note here for two kinds of tile. I need an interior tile, and on this image here, with that we received, it seems to be a couple of different kinds of tile. Like there's this light tile, 
there's a sort of more natural stone looking tile yeah it's like two so interior tile uh, and two exterior tiles so two different kinds of exterior tiles that's what I'm going to make uh, what else do we see here flags I see a lot of flags but the question is are is flags a common thing to see in the country or are there flags here because this is a tourio tourist location now as as I as, as I mentioned before with the text they did not specify this being an exact duplicate and I don't know do I want to make this a tourist spot I guess it makes sense if there's lots of shops around like I'm I can look in there and I see like mannequins or clothes so maybe I will go with it I'll ju just for the sake I'll, I'm gonna make some flags flags and just in case you don't know where you are if we are in Italy so I need the Italian flag uh, lights what kind of lights did they use I see like a teardrop shaped lights I guess lights are important no we need our, our scene to be visible even if I'm not going into depth with the lighting and other aspects besides just the modeling so I see spherical spherical glass outsides with a small teardrop shaped inside um, Although it's although the the requirements for this do specify it needs to be gray, it does not, however, specify that I can't change the material. It it just said the colors, and he said don't bother with the UV. So I could still make a glass material and add emission to light the scene. So I'm going to throw in some lighting into what needs to be made round covers teardrop lights well here in Canada we'd call that uh, Christmas lights <laughs> but anyways that's what they have so other things to notice uh, street signs actually I see quite a few street signs around here they're kind of yeah Lots of street signs there. Where else? Now that's kind of interesting. Uh, this whole area appears to be kind of isolated. Like you have to go through oh, the arch. Remember I was just a while ago I was mentioning using the arch for the buildings. Well, there's another arch that goes over the road. But uh, yeah, the streets are very, very narrow. Seems to be very narrow streets into this large area. So street signs. That's definitely, that could be something to put in. Add street signs. Uh, what else could I have? Mm, there's there's lots of pieces on here that are like aesthetic. Like look at those little balconies. Those balconies have like no standing space at all. In fact, they don't even actually there. I was going to say they don't have plants, but that one clearly has plants on it. So I'm thinking I should make a ornamental iron work. Uh, porch or balcony. I guess that's called a balcony. Because you will no you will notice that this is like all iron bar stuff. It's not like here. No, here we have a lot of buildings that are either made of concrete. No, like we have when when we make when we make uh, balconies in Canada, a lot of it's usually made of wood. No, that, that's generally what it's made of. Or it's made of hollow pieces of steel or aluminum. Actually, I think aluminum's probably more common because it's lightweight. But here it looks more like wrought iron bars that have been forged. Actually, years ago I used to do forging. It was quite a bit of fun putting the iron, iron rod into the forge and then hammering it into shape. But anyways, that's, that's a whole other thing. So what we need, we need porches, balconies. I I don't really know what I'm talking about. I think it's just balconies, and it 
needs to be made of iron bars and very ornamental and we'll probably want plants now plants might be a problem for me because because there's no textures it's kind of difficult for me to put plants into this environment and have it make sense because oftentimes if you ever look at a wireframe for a game generally you'll have a whole bunch of leaves or a whole branch that's just a 2d image that they put onto a plane and they have a transparency map to cut out that uh, branch shape but i won't be able to do that in this case so all my plants would merely look like a jumble of planes so maybe i i think maybe i should divide my uh my list here so things to make i'll make uh, an essential section things that have to be made and a non-essential So are like the, the secondary elements, which would be plants. Although plants do wonders for filling in scenes and adding details, but it just it may be a little bit difficult for this project. So the other, I believe the, the text we said, it said we needed to make three buildings. I'm going to just double check that right now to be absolutely sure. Do, do, do proxy color gray yes at least three different silhouette building shapes with your kit so what what uh, buildings or shapes can we get well we have a tower there which is uh, I think that's interesting I'm sure there's some some historical reason there would be a tower uh, we have these buildings which are you notice all these buildings are kind of on levels right they're different heights and even when they're attached together there's there's like separate levels as you go along the building. So that's one way I can make uh, different silhouettes is to change those levels. Uh, the other thing is I might want to get creative with those arches. Like if I had an arch like at the corner of the building where you could actually see through the arch to another side of the building, that would be an interesting silhouette. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go into my list here and say buildings. Well, actually, yeah, I, I might need to rearrange this list a little bit more again, but buildings, I need three with unique silhouette. Eh, I don't think I spelled that right, but oh well. And I'm going to make some more, more comments on those. They all have two. Let's see, one's going to be a tower. Another is going to be like an apartment, since they all these buildings here seem to be apartment type buildings. And another one could be like a mall, but I don't see any evidence that there's like uh, multi-level shopping like we would in you know, in America or the UK or whatever. They all all the shops seem to be at the bottom. So, hmm, what could I do there? I could offset a shop, like have the building on top and then move the shop to the side so it kind of, well, it's still kind of the same building though. I don't know, I might just have to make multiple apartments. I could make like a government building, eh, I don't know. What kind of buildings would there be? Is that also an apartment back there? It's not enough resolution for me to really tell. but. Maybe I'll just uh, leave that for the time being and you know, cause as I build, I'm going to come up with new ideas. So not going to worry about it too much. And lastly, uh, we have like um, peons. I think those are called those little uh, buildings, like shops that are outside. That's kind of interesting. There's like these curved things that are for shading the chairs. I've, I've never seen a shade like that. That's pretty neat. Pretty neat concept. So maybe we'll add that to our things to make. 
make little uh, stalls or shops. Kind of like, I'll call them tent shops. Because they're kind of out in the space. That would that'd be kind of interesting, tent shops. And the things we want for that would be umbrella, because all these seem to have umbrellas. Uh, we might need chairs, you know, if it was like a little cafe or something. And perhaps, wh what else could be there? One more item. I kind of like this one. It looks like it's made of iron and it has uh, like roll down shielded windows. I don't know, roll down windows? I don't think the windows themselves roll down, but that would be good enough. So cool. So we already have quite a nice list of stuff to make. So I'm going to actually that we should include maybe a few windows. Buildings, tower apartment, windows. How many different kinds of windows do I see in this picture? Like there's these rectangular windows, so that's one window. That I think that's also a rectangular window just with a little ornament on top. I see windows divided up, like these windows here are divided, those ones are not. So that, that could be worthwhile. Oh yeah, and blinds. I do think there's fa some fabric blinds behind the pane of glass. I might want to include that just to add a little bit more depth to the scene. So our windows should contain, I'm thinking three different types of windows or three uh, styles and curtains and I guess that's you know, I, I'm I'm not going to bother too much with that list just good note for us to have so I think I'm done looking at that picture for the time being so now I'm going to go to the Wikipedia page and read what it says about this place So, Bassano del Grappa. Probably said that completely wrong. And by the way, for people watching this on Twitch, I'm not monitoring any of the comments, so my apologies if I don't respond to you while you're, or while this uh, recording is happening. I will be putting this on YouTube a after, no, later. But anyways, so. It is a city of commune in the Vicenza province. Probably, probably something I want to look up, the Vicenza, learn a little bit about the history, and the region of Vento. Another thing I should probably read through in the northern Italy. Well, it bounds the communes of Casola, Morostica, Slagna, Povdigrappa, Romano. Uh, I know I'm not going to say those because I'm probably saying it completely wrong, but all that stuff, that's stuff we want to read because it's going to give us background information on what we're making, and it's going to tell us a lot about the culture, the art especially, because that's what we're focusing on here. So definitely read that a little bit later. So some neighborhoods of these communes have been, have become in practice a part of the urban area of Bersano, so that the population of the whole urban area is higher than the population of Bersano proper. The artist Jacob Bersano was born, worked, and died in Bersano and took it as his surname. Bersano del Grappa is also famous for inventing the spirit grappa, traditionally an after-dinner drink made from palm nuts. Hmm, interesting. So this artist apparently has appears to have a heavy influence on the city, so it's probably worth looking at the art that he's done. Now, looking at this stuff, it's, uh, Wikipedia has some different ages, like it's showing prehistoric and Roman, Middle Ages, and modern times. So we're probably going to want to look at modern times. I'm going to look at the other stuff after this recording, just to keep this moving along. but. Uh, Definitely, we want to see the history here. So during the French Revolutionary Wars, the city 
was the site of the Battle of Bassano in 1815. It was included in the Kingdom of Lombardy Vignata and became part of the Unified Kingdom of Italy in 1866. Napoleon bon Bonaparte remained in Bassano del Grappa for many months. The original name of this town was Bassano Veneto. Hmm, that's interesting. After the terrible battles on Mount Grappa in World War I. So, that tells me that there's been war, which means I may be able to get away with uh, making destroyed buildings. Which could be interesting. That uh, would, would be nicer than just a, a clean setup for a game. Where thousands of soldiers lost their lives. A decision was made to change the name of the town in 1928. The name was changed to Bassano del Grappa, meaning Bassano of Mount Grappa, as a mem memorial to the soldiers killed. So that part there tells me that they value... I know, it's not. I, I'm probably going to say this wrong, but they value the war, or at least the they value the lives of the soldiers who fought in that war for them. So that's a little bit of patriotism on on their part and I may be able to show that in the environment somehow so some thoughts to think of or considerations would be patriotic military I don't know just a thought I'm adding it to my notes so I can consider it later Ernest Hemingway, during his days as an ambulance driver in the war, spent many days in Bassano and eventually settled there as part of a farewell to arms. Also, other American writers spent some days in Bassano during World War I, such as Scott, something something rather, and Dos Passos. During World War I, Bassano was in the front area, and all the industrial activities were halted. Hmm, interesting. So question is, are they still halted? Because that could have an effect on, I don't know if I want to put anything industrial in the scene. So if I put anything industrial in the scene, it sounds like I may want to make or aim for World War I or pre-World War I era. So it's, it's things like this that we, we need to read the background information for. After the armistice with Italy, the city was invaded by German troops who killed or deported numerous inhabitants. The symbol of the town is the covered wooden pontoon bridge. Now that is definitely important because that is an object that represents that area. Here's a picture of it. I definitely want to save this into my reference. So I'm going to download the file. Going to move that file into my reference folder. There we go. Definitely an important piece that I would have missed if I hadn't have read this. Okay, which was designed by the architect Andrea Palladio. I believe that's the artist we saw before. No, it's not. Jacob Bassano. So this guy, we definitely want to do some research on him because clearly his work was very influential on this area as well in 1569. The bridge was destroyed many times. The last time during World War II, the Alpine soldiers, or Alpini, have always revered the wooden bridge and Bossano del Grappa after the destruction of the bridge. They took up a private collection and had the bridge completely rebuilt. Often soldiers flock to the bridge to remember and sing the songs from their days as alpine soldiers. The grappa shop in Nardini Distillery is located on the bridge known as Ponte di Gili Alpini. I know I'm just butchering the pronunciation. Hmm, interesting. Definitely more things to consider in our design for the environment. So, Bassano del Grappa is also hometown of Renzo Rosso, the founder and president of Diesel. I believe that's a company? Diesel, formerly called Voltex Fashion. Hmm. I've never heard of it, but it appears to be a fashion.
design firm. I wonder if that's what we saw in that picture. I'm just going to bring it up. Hmm. Pape. So that there might be what we're reading about. Because I see a lot of fashion store there. I, I can't really read the signs to tell exactly what it is. But this is definitely a consideration. Diesel. So we definitely want to add that to our reference material to look at later. The company became an important source of business for the city and its surrounding region. So fashion's obviously a big deal here. As thanks to the support that Rosso has received locally, he has invested personally in the city's professional soccer team. So they like soccer. That's another good thing to know. The Sano Virtus 55 Street, whatever initiated various reconstructions of the town center and recently launched a large Wi-Fi hotspot that provides free internet to the city's inhabitants. Well, aren't they lucky? Geography. The Sano is located 129 meters above sea level, so 423 feet, has an area of 46.79 square kilometers. So what that means is this place is pretty compact. That's what it sounds like. It's a very small place. So whatever population's there obviously is stacked up. I mean, we saw them in the photo. Those were all apartment buildings, not single residences. Uh, the highest point is at 1,276 meters or 4,186 feet. Whereas the lowest point is at 84 meters, 276 feet. The city lies at the foothills of the Venetian Prealps. That's another thing we're going to want to look at because that's important to where where this whole place is situated. We need to know where River Brenta comes out of the southern end of Canal di Brenta. So that also means that there is a large river nearby and that probably has influence on the local culture comes out of the southern end of the Canal de Brenta, also called Val Brenta, Brenta Valley, and flows in the lowlands and borders of Vizinza. Okay, so that's it. That's all the history I'm going to read about that. So next thing, kind of summarizes some main sites. So they have a cathedral, definitely worth looking at, a castle, hmm, that's interesting a church, another church, of course their wooden covered bridge, whatever that is, I'm not sure what that's supposed to be, let's open that link and see what it shows, uh, it's an artist, hmm, I don't know, new, not with Novia, so some other kind of building, a renaissance edifice, 15th century coat of arms. I don't know what that even is. Let's do a quick search. Renaissance edifice. Come on, hurry up and load it. Go, go, go. And, oh look, we ended up at a spam website. Maybe switch this to image search. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't can't really tell what that is. The Plazo Sturm, home to the Ceramics Museum. Interesting. So, notable people, international relations. Oh, they have an official website. Let's check out this uh, city's website. Maybe it can give me some good reference material from there. Of course, none of it's in English. Do you have any pictures? Pictures, pictures, pictures. Hmm. Oh, what's that? Come on. Is that really the largest picture you have? 
I wish I knew what they were saying. Okay, never mind. That's just wasting time <laughs> talking or uh, reading through there because I don't understand it. But anyways, that's that's what we have learned. So let's make some notes here of things that we've found out about this place that may be important to making our environment. So what do they have? Just a quick overview. Do do do. Virgin of Ivji, yeah, we open these tabs. So, some important people. Jacopo Bassano. And as I as I have mentioned earlier, I'm going to look up this stuff uh, after the live stream. I'm not I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time doing this on video because it's going to take a little while. Oh yeah, the place we need to do, I need to look up the place, places, so we're in the province of Vicenza, and Veneto is, what is Veneto? Being one of the 20 regions of Italy. Okay, so so Veneto is some kind of region. I, I'm not sure how a region is different from a province, but anyways, that's what it is. A region. Uh, yeah, here's another important person. Found him. Include him in our list. Nardini Grappa. Bottled? Oh, it must be like beer or something similar to that. But you know, that could be an important thing for our shops. Because when we make the shops, we're going to need to put stuff in it. And you know, if there's like a local food, that's something we definitely want to consider adding into our design. So, uh, just make a food category paste that in there. Diesel, so that's the fashion design that we're, that was mentioned. So we can put this under shops, what kind of shops that this place would have. Very good. And Brenta, which is the nearby river. You know, if if there's a river or other body of water, this could be a like a fishing community. That's one way that they could be impacted by that. Uh, the other impact of having water nearby is transportation. It's possible that they are a hub for um, international shipping or receiving products to and from other countries, which which can be quite relevant because if that is the case, we may see more uh, shipping containers, more modes of transportation such as semi trucks and ships, which other words or or in another place say inland, we may not see that kind of stuff. So it's possible. Bodies of water do have quite a large impact on the development of cultures. So definitely add that in. And last of all, the the, the Venetian pre-alps. So looks like some kind of mountain range. I don't know how close it is to the city, but I mean, if they have mountains, that's something I could put in the distance, right? Like you're you're in the environment, you can your player can walk around in through the buildings and the spaces and you know for the far background where it's not accessible to the player maybe there we would see the pre-alps you never know that's that is something that we want to consider so land masses pre-alps good that's all i needed to know from that so what should I do now? 
things to make considerations. I think we should I think look for some more pictures. So what kind of pictures do we have? Maybe what we should do is look up Actually, we should go to Google Maps is what we should do because then we can see an overview of the area through the, the satellite images. Could definitely get some good stuff there. So we'll open up Google Maps and we are going to look for this place is called, what is this place called? Why am I forgetting the name of this place? Oh, there we go. I just saw it. Sano del Grappa. All right, and switch to satellite view. Welcome to Posano del Grappa. So, hmm, this is a there's a river, and I see I see a lot of farmland here, and what appears to be the mountains. So this must be the Priops. Okay, so looking up, so to the north and also to the west, we have pre-alps. Uh, looking at this map, is that the ocean? I, yes, it is. Or it's, it's kind of the ocean, it's like a bay area, but cool. So obviously we're gonna have shipping. Uh, fishing is going to be somewhat part of this community, but not right at the shore, but I imagine fish would be something that you could find on sale in the shop. Uh, the background, we're definitely going to want to see the pre-alps. Um, lots of farmland around here. This appears, yeah, it's kind of interesting. All these farms are like little strips. See all the buildings are spread out. It's kind of neat. So, where, I wonder if, where's the area that that picture on Wikipedia was of? Maybe I could find that. Hmm. Is any of this modeled? No, unfortunately not. No, and I'm not seeing the exact place that was photographed here. But anyways, you can you can see from here like there's obviously a lot of greenery. We have this river, the oceans nearby, the mountains are nearby. Um, the roads. Uh, seems to have some. Actually, I think that's a railroad right there. Yeah, it's a train track. But it looks like they have two lanes going each direction, at least there. I don't know, th that looks like one lane. But anyways, we see lots of plants. That's an important note. The water is important, the mountains are important. Uh, we see all these buildings, they have uh, those ceramic tiles. So obviously that's important. Um, another note is that they all seem to have courtyard areas. Like you notice all these buildings, they kind of go around this little green area. There's a courtyard there, there's courts there, there, oh there, seem like a little tiny one, but that seems to be a very common uh, cultural thing in this area, is these courtyards, so I definitely want to consider courtyards as being a, a major part of, of this design. And if we notice with the image that I was given by the studio, sorry, right there, we kind of note that this is also a, a courtyard area. It's, a, it's interesting in a way because I don't see any real roads, but there are vehicles parked around here. So I think, I think that's what uh, we'll be doing. So our environment will be, will be primarily a courtyard. It will have the pre-alps in the background 
we will have well if if I have time or if if I can work this out at the end I should have lots of greenery so I should include uh, things like pots and other little little garden areas to put these plants so courtyard preaps greenery and the shops I I didn't see any major shops so like small shops there we go that's what it's going to be so you have an idea now it's time to figure out what uh, the pieces that we're going to make or how we're going to make them so I'm going to uh, I want to open up the Unreal Engine since we're since we're finally done with that other stuff for now uh, tomorrow I'm going to look over reference again and uh, think about it some more but for now I think I've gathered all I can reasonably gather in one day so here here's a little test project this this is part of Unreal Editor I'm hoping I can get the sk export some of the models that come with this so I can find out what the proper scale to make my models is so the little little default thing that comes with Unreal Engine not particularly impressive it's just some cubes so we can press the play button and we have a first person shooter and obviously we're not going to go through Italy shooting everything <laughs> that's not the point but I do need that scale so I'm not overly familiar with this engine I mean there's a lot of engines out there and I have used quite a few but uh, I believe I should be able to find somewhere the mesh item for our character actually here's something character skeletal mesh animation so I the skeletal mesh let's see if we can export that I don't let's see save can I save it uh, that no okay that just saved that just saved any updates I made into the project but I want to export that mesh Okay, export selected, desktop, test, um, I'm going to put it into my blender and let's create a new folder, so we'll put these UE4 Sample map, let's change this to our character mesh. Character dot. Maybe I'll, I'm, I think I'm going to make it prefixes for this project. Mesh underscore character. Okay, save it. And let's open up Blender. I often use uh, Maya in for a lot of this stuff, but because no software was specified, I, I'm going to use Blender. The, the nice thing about Blender is that all the modeling tools have hotkeys, and when you're working with Maya, you have to always be clicking on toolbars, and well, no, like pie menus and hotlocks and stuff, and I don't know, Blender's just uh, more efficient to work with. Everything's a bit faster. So, let's see here. I'm hoping that what I got was what I wanted to have. And do do do. The test. Touch blender. Open. I do not see anything. Why is that? Hmm, interesting. Well, it seems that that's not working, so maybe there's something else here that's how about that cube? That cube's probably enough. 
I know. Maybe I maybe I should just make it all in blend. Find find the correct st scale in Blender and then scale it when I get in here, because I have I have noticed going between various programs that sometimes the scale changes. Like uh, for example, uh, Blender units, like one Blender unit is the equivalent of one hundred and seventy two Maya units. Or sorry, it's the opposite way. 172 Maya units is the equals to one Blender unit. So whenever you bring in a model from Blender to Maya, it's it's considerably smaller than than it than it should be, and you always have to scale it up. I I may just have to do that with the Unreal Engine as well. Uh, let's see here. So we can select that cube. I'll try to export this. Export selected, FBX, cube, save, open up Blender, import, FBX. Okay, that one worked. I'm not sure why that character didn't work. And notice that the center, for some reason, or no, the, the center of gravity isn't uh, put in the correct place for some reason, but uh, that's not a big issue. To fix that, I'll just select these two faces, shift S, cursor to selected, and then shift control, out. let's see, nope, it's the wrong hotkey. I'll just go to set origin to 3D cursor, and then center that. Okay, there we go. So my theory is that's about the that that's the minimum size that we need for a character to fit through in, in terms of height. See, I can find out for sure if that's the case by going in here, duplicating. Come on, duplicate. There we go. Duplicating the object like so. And duplicate it once more. Basically, the idea here is that I'm creating a little thing for a character to walk over. Just to make sure it works. And yep, there we go. That's the size we need. Works perfectly. So now that we have the scale, we can figure out what uh, grid we're going to use. And to simulate the character, I'm I'm gonna use a UV sphere. Actually, actually no, I'm not gonna use a UV sphere. I'm gonna use an ICO sphere. That's good enough. Maybe three subdivisions. There we go. Actually, get rid of that timeline move the center of gravity to the bottom of the icosphere. Sorry, I believe that's it. Good. There we go. So what, what this represents is the size of our character in the Unreal Engine. So everything we're going to make is going to be in relation to that object. There, that's about right. Just apply the scale. And that, that, that makes sure that we can fit through things. So the first thing that we want to make with just about any modular kit is a doorway. And the reason why we do that is as I said for skill purposes to make sure our character can fit through any place it needs to go. And another thing that I should mention is it needs to be a minimum width of two of the characters. And the reason we do that is so if we have an AI in our scene, that AI can walk past the character without getting stuck. So there we go. That is our scene, so I want to save this 
I'm going to use it in the future. Future blend. And what am I going to make sure I put that? I'm going to make another folder here. Let's call this. Yeah. Blend is good enough. Scale. Ref underscore scale. Blend. Okay, so scale's done, notes are done, we look through the Wikipedia, we analyze that reference. Now I want to get a little bit more specific with my reference because I am ready to start making something. So I want to look for Italian arches. Because if we go in our notes here, that's yeah, that's like the very first thing in our in our list that we made earlier, the arches. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to collect a number of photos. Hmm, that one, someone's put a poster, posterized filter on that. Anyways, doesn't matter. I'm just going to select a bunch of arches, open them up in new tabs. Oh, that's interesting. We will need to do some cross checks with the, you know, the, the place of origin of these different designs to make sure that they fit into the area that we're creating this environment for. Sure, something up there. Eh. Yeah, sure. That one looks cool. What is that? That one almost looks like it was in a war. There, it was talking about in Unreal that, or sorry, not in Unreal, on the wiki, wiki page. A bad link. No. This one works. Sorry, I just heard the computer complain about something. I'm going to check on it just a moment. I know. Windows made a sound, but I'm not seeing anything. I'm going to ignore it. I'm just going to save that picture, stick it into my reference on the web. Maybe I'll make subcategory here called arches so that when I'm looking for arches I know where to find it press save I can close that close that another broken link ah, flicker flicker is so annoying <laughs> download that of course it doesn't want to put it where I want it to be. Arches. Get in there. Actually, while I'm looking at this picture, I'm just going to turn some music on. Ooh, there. A little bit nicer. Very fine arches. anymore. Let's close it. What is this? Video. Oh, that's pretty cool. Ancient Roman rule. What is this? That is awesome. Really nice reference material right here. Okay, so I'm, I want to save this video, so what I'm going to do is just copy the YouTube link and go to 
cute food. Let's put in the YouTube link. Press the download button. Save it as in MP4. Come on. Save it. Nice. Very cool stuff. Uh, I won't. I won't watch it now, but definitely something to consider. Um, since this is in Italy, I'll, I will make a few points. Still, we're seeing a lot of those columns and arches, just as we mentioned earlier in the stream. There we go again. More arches, more square columns, so definitely want to focus on those. Uh, everything appears to be made of stone, so I think stone blocks is probably something we should add to this list. It's uh, easy to model, and it looks nice. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna turn the volume down a little bit. Arch, okay. stone blocks. That's a good thing to have in there. This is really neat. Unfortunately, it looks like it's going to be a pain to try and download this picture. So, I'll just have to be, do a print screen, open up Photoshop. Come on, show me Photoshop. Thank you. Sorry, I, I have dual monitors here, so it just opened up on a different screen. File, new. Clipboard, okay. Paste it in. And we shall crop that. Ha! Huh. Take that, fineartsamerica.com. Can't stop me from getting reference material. <laughs> there we go. Reference material. I actually. Yeah, I can make that just a little bit bigger. Sorry. Let's do this just one more time. Higher resolution. As a JPEG, desktop, reference, web, arches. Good enough. Okay, so we have that. Ooh, that's pretty fancy. Now that right there is nice. We get a lot of material detail. We can see what it's made of. It looks like stone with almost mud. Kind of mud construction, but that that's definitely useful because when we're modeling for games, something that's quite common is that we'll model the details right on the corner of a wall or some edge because we can see the silhouette where it's broken up. Like I can kind of see along this edge where all the bumps of the stone are. And then the rest of the wall will be completely flat and we'll fake the detail that's coming out of it using normal or parallax maps. So, reference like this is very nice. See all the stonework there? Uh, clearly all the tiles also appear to be blocks of stone. Very nice reference material, actually. Definitely want to save this. Saved. What else can we get from here? That. Okay. Here's that roof stuff we are talking about earlier. Definitely want that. Uh, pots. Yes, we definitely for all the plants. Pots are good to have. So let's save this image. And we don't want it in arches. I know, even though the, this image has quite a number of useful things in it, I think I'm going to put it under uh, roof. 
reference material for our roofs. Save that. Close it. Um, a lot more stone. Actually, that would be good for our cobble reference. Another arch. I don't really need 100 images of just an arch, but. high resolution this is actually yeah they they have these um decorative like uh borders that go around you know those uh louder cut pieces of wood or plaster or whatever those are definitely something i want to research let's put it on there there we go just on my list to look at it later definitely want to save this image and we'll put this under floor Save. Hmm. a lot of pictures here oh that must be the cathedral that we read about on Wikipedia that is very interesting oh they're really low resolution unfortunately it's too bad. Plots. That's neat. Not sure what's going on there. More columns, arches. Colosseum. Very cool. Check that out. All that intricacy, like a whole wall with uh, sculptures made right into it pretty cool unfortunately i just don't have enough time to do that level of detail that right there though that is that roof i want to save that oh, sorry it's not a roof it's a ceiling i'm going to put it in the roof and roof anyways very cool that round thing is pretty cool. Save that. Now, wh when you're collecting reference material, it doesn't have to be really high resolution, although that is preferred, as long as you can see what the whatever important detail is in there. bridge. I think my scene should have a bridge in it. I know a big you know when we were looking over at the Wikipedia article it said that that was a pretty major cultural thing for this area that we're supposed to make so we shall add a bridge section to our reference. Oh, and here's the uh, like little stalls. Plaza Navona. Hmm. Okay, I see all the artists or shopkeepers, whatever, that are standing around on the on the courtyard to sell stuff. So I'll make another section of my reference. I'm going to call it shops. I need to have some shops. Save that. Save that. One thing about references, you need enough to be diverse, but don't put so much that like you don't need a hundred photos of a pillar, you know. Don't don't overwhelm yourself, just get Get enough for what you need. That well, this is a clear, uh, a clear demonstration of the ornaments, as well as uh, reuse of design. You notice on this building here. Let's see if I increase it in size for you guys. There's there's a circular window, and that same window is like there's two more. There's two other same windows. If you just model that one window, you can scale it down, and it becomes more elements for that building. Uh, you know, there's this interesting ornamental piece on the top. It's the exact same piece, but flipped on the other side. 
Um, yeah, these windows. Here, here's something interesting. They have these windows that are like flush with the wall, and then they have the same window that's been pushed back. Another interesting way to add more detail without uh, having to put in a whole lot of unique assets that would increase the weight on your game engine. Maybe I will save this. Where should I put this? I'll put it in the building section. What? That is weird. What is that? That's like fish things with crazy teeth. <laughs> what is that? That is bizarre. You know what? I'm, I'm going to save this image just so I can look at it later. Put a random section in there. Ooh, that's neat. That is cool reference. This picture is copyrighted, blah, blah, blah. Do not copy, but contact, etc., etc. Sorry, man, but I'm going to copy your picture. Of course, I, I do not mean to be a pirate, but... Uh, that is some great reference material right there. JPEG, and I'm going to put it under arches. You know, if, if I was in the studio, I probably wouldn't have copied that picture. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's cool. Check that out. Like all those pillars, that's really neat. That is neat. That is really cool. Oh man, that's awesome. That is so cool. I want it. Give it to me. Give it to me. Save it as arches. Eh, it doesn't really belong in the arches section. We should put it in. Yeah, we need another section for columns. Save. Okay, that's good. So I think I'm going to, uh, there's a few other things I want to research here for reference materials before I start modeling, but uh, yeah, okay, what was I doing, I was going to go here. So definitely tomorrow with the streams going to primarily be making the stuff. I know today was a lot of talking, reading, and looking at pictures, and finding other materials. But we're definitely going to uh, get into the, the grunt work pretty soon. I call it grunt work because usually you already know what, it, what you're doing. I still like doing it. You know, it's, uh, I think it's very fun to be able to create uh, new and uh, or unique things. You know, it's something that takes a lot of years of practice to really become proficient at. Look at that. That is weird, bizarre, and really cool at the same time. 
like a piece of ornament so if people with weird expressions on their faces like you know neat oh there's another rat hmm it says Toronto why why am I in Toronto Hamilton hmm I wasn't paying attention to what it says up the side we're not even in Italy anymore. Anyways, that, let's get out of there. Look at that picture. That's a cool picture. You know it's low resolution? Sometimes I just find some images to be inspiring. You know, you look at it, and even if you can't tell exactly what it is, if it inspires you, and you have an imagination to see something even if it's not there, you can create some really cool stuff even without understanding what the image is. Actually, I had to just save that image. Plain arches. Nice. Oh, that's cool. That is really cool. I like that picture. That that's some fantastic uh, use. Like, like look at this image. It's it's columns. Okay, it's flat walls. We have arches. And you know, just basically a floor, and a window at the very end. It's very simple. And I mean, if you have columns, arches, wall, and you know, a floor. You, you can make this with just a basic uh, model kit. And it's very unique, ev even though it's made of such basic components. So that's definitely something I want to put in my reference, because I could make something pretty cool with that kind of stuff. How about this? Yeah, here's the same kind of idea. Hmm. Pinterest couldn't find it. So I'll just have to save a low resolution picture. What is that? Hmm, that's interesting. So it's like the whole ground is made of little cobblestone and then they made the steps of cobblestone as well and they're holding it up with some wooden boards and they also have some arches that are inside the building hmm. i don't know why they would do that but it's certainly interesting it looks like there may have been some other structure built here and then they took it down that is definitely neat Uh, save a picture of that. Come on, turn the email. Hmm. Oops. Oh, put in arches. And a JPEG. So I think that's enough of that for now for the, as far as the buildings are concerned because the buildings are my primarily are my primary concern because that's that's going to be the major part of the environment. Um, I should include some natural elements like I was thinking of a bridge. We saw those like enclosed uh, hallway areas with the arches. I'm thinking that if there's like a river or something going through a little stream, there's probably going to be rocks or other natural places. It's not all going to be covered in tile. So so we should look at uh, some rock structures. Hmm. 
is it doesn't really look like what I was going for. Uh, no, why am I not seeing it? Rock structures, maybe I'll just look for more generic rocks. Because, you know, a lot of uh, the geographical differences in rocks comes from the texture. Like, like if, it, you're, if you're in the game engine, you unwrap the rock model and then you put the texture of whatever rock you want. Because I don't have the textures, I can't use that uh, same level of detail to define what I, what uh, my items are, so I may just get away with using some more generic rock references. Like that, that that's a pretty cool reference. Just gonna do a print screen. It's not Photoshop. So this is going to be a really, I think this is going to be probably one of the funnest things to model because it's so uh, organic. You know, I, I like modeling organic things. I mean, everything is organic to a certain e extent. But I think there's something a little bit more abstract with working on organic shapes than I, I, I don't know, I enjoy it. Come to think of it, I should have took uh, some screenshots from Google Maps. Oh, well, I, I'll do that tomorrow. Not a big deal. That is really cool. Hey, where did the picture go? Show me the picture. These are neat. Very nice. Lots of you see lots of grasses, sparse trees, plants. Neat. Actually, this is a great reference here because uh, there's a picture of a person standing in the doorway, which gives us a great uh, scale sense. Maybe I will save that picture. This is neat. We have uh, solid chunks of stone with decorative carvings in it. That's definitely something to put into our reference. Dirt with stones in it. Very cool. But I, yeah, that's the picture I came for. That is really neat. Like it. I like it a lot. I don't think this is in the same area, or I guess it could be, because remember we we're talking about uh, the pre-Alps are to the north. So I guess if you if you were looking south, it would be flat like that. But I don't think this is in the exact geographic location that I'm making. So let's 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 save this. Save that. Save this. And that's kind of random. Maybe I'll put make it just a decorative section for small decorative things. Save. Save. Put that one in the organic section. Sorry, the organic section. Actually, maybe I should put in the floor section because it's kind of a, a floor thing. That. That's 
what I came for. Arches. I don't know if I have any place in mind that the area I'm thinking is going to be primarily buildings because you know as as the text was at, at the beginning of this stream when I was talking about the requirements for this project it was a city block so I don't know entirely sure how this would fit in with it but I'm still going to save it because even if the, the place we're making isn't a big hill like this some of these uh, like rock structures, the grass, how the dirt and the plants are, we could put little bits of this in the scene just to make it interesting. So I'm going to save, save that picture. Up and into the organic section. Anyways, I, I think I've had enough of that. Uh, let's look up some decorative Italian tiles. Yes, tiles are important. There was a lot of tiles in our original reference. Neat. Now, a thing to keep in mind here is a lot of this detail work is in the texture and I'm modeling, not texturing, so I'm mainly looking for major shapes I could model. Hmm. And one one concern is that if it's a large area and you're going to put fine model model tiles over the floor, you could overstep the poly count limitations. So I, I can't make everything like a detailed model tile. I think that's really the look I'm looking for. Okay, Photoshop, once again. Since it seems like I can't save that photo for whatever reason. section Okay, what's that? It's an interesting looking piece of tile. Like I could even make a piece like that like a whole bunch of tiles put together and though that would be one modular piece that I put on the floor. Yeah, I kind of like it. Save that picture. Come on, where's my save dial? There we go. So on the floor. Anyways, that's uh Let's also look for iron iron work. Because we, we needed the iron work for the balconies. Stuff like that. Very cool. Definitely rare. Mm. 
Now for for areas where the player won't be able to get to, that kind of stuff would probably just be a texture, you know, a, a 2D image of that wrought iron, but for the ground levels, it will be beneficial for us to model some of that stuff. It, it looks a lot nicer when it's modeled. And if I was right, which I usually am, uh, the lights also were held by such an apparatus. Just look at this uh, original picture once more. Yeah, there's some kind of wrought iron thing going around on the top. Uh, it's better seen here. It's like a swirly thing. And as I was mentioning before, that wrought iron, like you see on these balconies here, there's uh, iron, iron bars that make up all that kind of stuff. So, definitely want that material available in our reference. And I don't have to go crazy, I'm just select a few pieces and hit on in life. Oh, rot iron gates. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. I can just grab a photo and get out of here. They don't make it so you can save the photo. It's so annoying. Okay. Do, do a print screen. Don't get too wound up about websites not letting you right click photos. Decorative section. Good enough. So we're not found. What kind of stuff is here? Eh, nope, not seeing what I want. I can right click this one. Uh, put it in the decorative section. Where is my decorative? There it is. Saved. And we want uh, plant pots or planters. I'll make a section for this because there are going to be quite a few planters. There's a planter. There's these kind of planters, which are like they, they mount to a wall. It's like half a planter. Like that. Or, um, that one's definitely more design on it. That's actually probably a better kind of planter for me to model because it just, it's a little bit more intricate. I like that one. Th that's actually a really nice design. I like it. How about Italian floor borders? I'm not sure if that's really the right thing to call it. Mm, 
Eh, maybe. Eh, I don't know. It's not what I was looking for. I'm not going to worry about it right now. It doesn't seem to be coming up with very useful results. I think we have enough reference material so far. Um, and how much is this? 15.6 megabytes in little JPEGs that are probably like three or 400 kilobytes each. I think that's enough. So with that being said, what we have accomplished so far today we have a collection of reference material. We went over the, the Wikipedia page. We went to the Unreal Engine 4.6. We exported uh, some models just so we can get the correct scale for our first person shooter character. And now we are ready, ready to start modeling. So for today, I, I think I'm gonna shut down the stream for now and come back mm, I don't know if I'm gonna come back later tonight but definitely tomorrow I want to get on by around 12 or possibly earlier and just so you know I am in Pacific Standard Time I believe that's UTC minus 8 not not entirely sure but uh, mm, definitely gonna start around the same time as I started today and hopefully I'll have uh, some models and stuff already done to show you guys what I, some of that stuff and tomorrow we'll have a focus on doing the modeling not just the reference materials and reading so have a good day this is Jeremy Bailey from theenvironmentguy.com goodbye